Hello everyone, a very good morning and welcome to my course, Basic Physics. This course is generally made for Diploma Degree students of first year, first semester. Myself, Gopal Chakraborty, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Greater Kolkata, College of Engineering and Management, Baribu. You can personally meet me at College Princess Ground Floor Physics Lab, or you can also send me a mail regarding your query and doubt to my given mail address. That is, G O D Physics Six at the red gmail dot com or gopal dot chakravarti underscore g k c e m at the red j i s group dot o r g i have a youtube channel you can subscribe my youtube channel for more videos the link is given here students you can go to that videos as i have uploaded all the videos on the subject basic physics as per state council syllabus so uh, if you feel any doubt feel free to contact me at my given email address so for this subject i am your subject teacher Now, uh, the, the course pages are www.websce.org and www.websce.co.in. The syllabus for this subject is already uploaded in the State Council website. So the students, if, if you want, you can download the syllabus for first year, first semester from the website as the link is given here. So the, the title of this subject is Basic Physics. It is under the category of Basic Science course. It has a credit tree, two lecture per week and two practical per week. This course is generally made for diploma degree students of first year, first semester. So, so all the branches except architecture, photography, multimedia and printing technology, rest of the students have to study this subject in their first year, first semester. So uh, as per our college, we have only electrical, and electronics and communication department students so these two department students will go into study this course for their first year first semester curriculum now uh, today the topic that i will going to be discuss is experimental measurement of surface tension Express pressure inside a liquid drop, angle of contact, capillarity, shape of liquid meniscus uh, in a capillary tube, rise of liquid in a capillary tube, some examples and some simple numericals. So these topics are also uh, under unit 2 that is general properties of matter. Prerequisites for these topics are Basic mathematics knowledge to solve the problems, knowledge of basic concepts science such as physics, visualization and analytical approach towards the subject is very much necessary. The course objectives are learn to understand the experimental measurement of surface tension and learn about angle of contact, capillarity, shape of liquid meniscus in a capillary tube and rise of liquid in a capillary tube. So, uh, 
after the completion of this course students will be able to know how to measure surface tension experimentally they will also uh, able to calculate excess pressure inside a liquid drop or a soap bubble uh, they have an idea about angle of contact and capillarity property so uh, these are basically considered as a possible course outcome So, uh, students, basically in last class I have discussed about the details of surface tension. So, uh, this is the second class on this uh, chapter surface tension. So, in that class uh, I have discussed the basic idea, basic phenomena or applications of the uh, surface tension. Okay, and I have also shown you that why the insects will able to work on the surface of the liquid, or why it is possible to uh, have solid pin uh, to float on the surface of a glass of a water, and why the marker shape, marker or the raindrop, uh, the actual shapes are uh, like a sphere. Okay, so these. All things is happen due to the due to the presence or due to basically of surface tension. So I would like to remind you what is surface tension. That surface tension is the tendency of a liquid surface to shrink into a minimum surface area as possible. So uh, basically. Surface tension is mathematically defined as force per unit length or energy per unit area. So uh, the unit is a newton per meter square whole divided by meter. So it's a newton by meter. Now, uh, as the surface tension force, this actually acts in a tangential on the on a line of churning of the particle or the body okay so basically surface tension comes from the presence of cohesive force and adhesive force okay what is that cohesive force and adhesive force the attractive force between same kind of molecules or atoms are called cohesive force and the attractive force between different kind of a molecular particle that is called adhesive force. So, as like uh, when say if you consider a liquid, one glass of liquid or one glass of water simply. So, uh, in the water that surrounds by the other water particle. So, so that force between them is called cohesive force. So, so uh, this attraction is much more. And now uh, the force of attraction between the glass surface and the water molecule. This is the example of adhesive force. So uh, due to presence of this force, uh, actually the upper surface of the liquid behaves as a membrane. Or need. So, uh, it's, uh, when it behaves like a stretched membrane, it can hold uh, the weight of that insects or a pin and so on. So, by this property, these phenomena happen. So, this is called the surface tension. So, uh, you need basically this idea to uh, know, to understand today's class, okay? So, uh, the students who have missed those class, please go through that video once again and uh, it will be very much helpful for you to understand today's class. So, uh, today uh, I will show you how you can experimentally uh, calculate or measure the surface tension, okay? Or uh, if you put uh, some particle inside a liquid, what will be the excess pressure that it feels by that liquid inside that water? Or also in case of soap bubble. 
inside, inside the liquid, liquid what, what will, will be the possible pressure, pressure. okay and, and there is another property, property that, that is called capillarity, capillarity. Uh, so, so this is uh, these, these things are going, going to be discussed in today's class so i will, will discuss in detail step by step now uh, the very first one that is experimental measurement of surface tension so how will measure first i will uh, i will show you the experimental setup then i will show you the calculations okay so uh, here the as shown in figure you can see that uh, suspended a rectangular glass plate from one arm of a sensitive balance okay now uh, place a beaker containing some liquid below it and the plate is balanced by weights on the other side so with its lower edge just above the water level okay so uh, here the balance is there in both sides we just place a uh, one side a glass plate and another side is a weight okay so uh, the beaker is raised slightly till the uh, liquid just touches the glass plate and pulls it down a little because of surface tension so uh, weights are added on the other side till the glass plate just leaves the water surface if the additional weight required is w uh, then the surface tension of the liquid air interface will be sigma l is that means uh, liquid air interface that's equals to w by 2l so as you know w is a weight so it is mg by 2l so m is the extra mass added and l is the length of the plate edge so this is the experimental setup So uh, what you learn from this experiment, uh, as you know, uh, surface tension that is defined as force per unit length. So here force is uh, nothing but weight of that uh, weight of uh, that uh, you have put on the right side of the balance. So um, uh, weight is nothing but mg and the per unit length so here the change in length that is 2l so weight per length 2l w by 2l that will give you the expression of surface tension now uh, the second one that is excess pressure inside a liquid drop so how we will derive uh, or how you will find out the amount of excess pressure inside that liquid drop so First of all, what we considered? I considered a spherical liquid drop of radius capital R. Okay, so as we consider a spherical shape of liquid drop, so it uh, consists of a minimum possible area. So as a shape is sphere. So uh, let the sigma is the surface tension of that liquid drop. Due to its spherical shape, there is an excess pressure P uh, it will exist inside that liquid drop that on the outside. So the excess pressure acts normally in an outward direction. Now uh, let the radius of the drop increase from capital R to capital R plus dr. So under the excess pressure, the initial surface area was 4 pi r square as it is a sphere, the surface area is 4 pi r square without expansion. Now when you expand it from, with, from a radius r to r plus dr, so the final surface area will be 4 pi r plus dr whole square. Okay. So uh, now you can write it. 4 pi r square plus 2 r dr plus dr square now that's equals to 4 pi r square plus 8 pi r into dr where 
d r square is neglected as it is very small because uh, with respect to r the increase in radius that d r that value is very much small so if you take the square of this small quant quantity it will give you another smallest one quantity so you can neglect it okay so uh, this is the final surface area as you uh, as you calculate it from this uh, due to the expansion of this uh, drop now as you uh, know the increase in surface area is 8 by r into dr okay so uh, because from how you find out this because the final surface area minus initial surface area so as the final surface area is 4 pi r square plus 8 pi r into dr and the initial one is a 4 pi r square so if you subtract these two you will get the increase in surface area 8 pi r into dr so uh, what is the work done work done in enlarging that drop that's equals to increase in surface energy because that amount of energy is converted or this amount of work done is converted uh, in uh, energy so you can write that work done is equals to increase in surface area into surface tension so 8 pi r into d l into sigma now uh, but what you know work done uh, can be written as force into distance so what is force that is pressure into area so pressure into area into distance now pressure means p area means 4 pi capital r square into distance that is dr because you increase the radius of amount dr only okay so now uh, you have received two expressions of work done so both are equal now equating these two what you will get p into 4 pi r square into dr that is equals to 8 pi r dr into sigma so uh, all the things are cancel out you re rearranging you can write the excess pressure inside the liquid drop the p equals to 2 sigma pi r so this is the expression of excess pressure inside a liquid drop now uh, next one excess pressure inside a soap bubble so uh, the how you will find that a soap bubble is also a shape of a sphere so uh, proceeding in the case of liquid drop in the last equation last expression we can write the increase in surface area that is equal to 8 pi r into dr but a uh, soap bubble has a air both inside and outside so it has two surface okay so effective increase in surface area that is equals to 2 into 8 pi r dr that means it is equals to 16 pi r into dr now work done in enlarging the soap bubble that is equals to increase in surface energy that is equals to increase in surface area into surface tension so uh, that is equals to uh, 16 pi r dr into sigma now as you know the work done is equals to force into distance so it's equal to p into 4 pi r square into dr now uh, here also you have received two uh, equation of work done now you can equate these two and that will give you p into 4 pi r square into dr equals to 16 pi r dr into sigma so uh, from both sides you can write uh, p the pressure that equals to 4 sigma by r so this is the excess pressure inside a soap bubble so uh, in the last expression where we have derived the excess pressure for inside a liquid drop uh, that's it is almost a similar kind of derivation only the difference is that in that case uh, single surface is there here as the air is exist inside both inside and outside the soap bubble so soap bubble has a two surface uh, so effective surface increase in surface area will be twice uh, than the uh, liquid in normal case where the 
but we have derived the x is pressure this is the only change otherwise rest of the part is almost same so the pressure expression p is equals to 4 sigma by r by sigma is the surface tension r is the radius of the liquid now uh, the next part that is contact angle so what is contact angle you see that uh, when uh, you pour the water within a test tube uh, the upper surface is not the uh, plane okay so here the contact angle is the angle conventionally measured through the liquid where liquid vapor interface meets a solid interface solid surface okay so uh, it quantifies the weightability of the solid surface by a liquid via the Young's equation. The angle between the meniscus and the containing wall of a column of the liquid measured from the vertical wall below the surface of the liquid to the position of the tangent to the meniscus at its point of contact with the wall so this is the contact angle so here you can able to see the some diagram is here for, for your understanding so uh, if the weightability is high so in that case the contact angle will be less than 90 degree as per uh, the figure I have drawn here so the tangent it shows the angle contact angle will be less than 90 degree and if the weightability is very low so in that case the contact angle will be greater than 90 degree now uh, shape of the liquid meniscus in a narrow tube uh, you know as I have already discussed regarding the cohesive force and adhesive force cohesive force is the force of attraction between molecules of the same kind and adhesive is the uh, attraction between opposite or different kind of molecules so here a concave meniscus occur when the particle of the liquid are more strongly attracted to the container so then to each other that means uh, the adhesive force is much more with respect to the cohesive force causing the liquid to climb the wall of the container so this occurs between water and glass water-based fluids like sap honey milk also have a concave meniscus in a glass or other vegetable container conversely a uh, convex meniscus occur when the particles in the liquid have a stronger attraction to each other than the material of container so that means in that case the cohesive force is much more with respect to the adhesive force so concave meniscus occur uh, for an example between mercury and glass and in barometer or thermometer etc so actually force of cohesion and addition play the important roles in case of contact angle now uh, i will discuss what is that capillarity uh, it's an important property of the liquid so it's phenomena basically capillarity is a phenomena of rise or falls of liquid in a capillary tube uh, in comparison to the surroundings is called capillarity so the surface tension acts to hold the surface intact uh, capillary reaction occurs when the addition to the surface material is much more stronger than the cohesive force between the water molecules the height of the height to which the capillary action will take water is limited by the surface tension and gravity so uh, you can see here the diagram due to the uh, due to the presence of this surface tension property the height of the water within a within a thin glass tube very thin with re that, that means the length of the tube is much more with respect to the radius so water will rise to that tube so some example of capillary uh, from the daily life that 
uh, blotting paper soak ink by capillary action uh, the pores of blotting paper acts as a capillary okay all rise uh, in a long narrow shapes the uh, spaces between the thread of a uh, wick the narrow spaces act as a capillary tube uh, we use towel made of uh, coarse cloth for dry or screen after taking a bath okay uh, sap rises from the roots of a plant uh, to its leaf and branches due to the capillary action uh, the tip of the knee from a pen is split to provide capillary action for the ink to rise so these are the examples of capillarity in daily life or daily use now uh, I will show you how we derive the formula of capillarity. Say consider a capillary tube of radius r dipped in a liquid of surface tension sigma in density rho. Suppose the liquid weights the side of the tube, uh, then its uh, meniscus will be concave. The shape of the meniscus of the water will be nearly spherical if the capillary tube is of sufficiently narrow bore. So as the pressure is greater on the concave side of a liquid surface, so excess of the pressure at a point A, uh, just point A that can be easily calculated. So you can see the diagram is here. Our objective is to find out the pressure at point A and point B. So as the uh, shape of the meniscus of the water will be nearly spherical. Uh, so, so above uh, the meniscus compared to the point B just below the meniscus is that is B equals to 2 sigma by R where R is the radius of curvature of the concave meniscus okay now if theta is the angle of contact then from the right angle triangle we can uh, write small r by capital R equals to cos theta so capital R equals to small r by cos theta so uh, P equals to 2 sigma cos theta by R, substituting the value of capital R. Next, uh, so due to the uh, this excess pressure P, the liquid rises in the capillary tube of height H when the hydrostatic pressure exerted by the liquid column becomes equal to the excess pressure P. So uh, therefore, for equilibrium, we can write that pressure equals to H rho G. So equating these two, we get 2 sigma cos theta by R equals to H rho G. So from where uh, H is equals to 2 sigma cos theta by R rho G. So uh, this is the ancient formula for the rise of liquid in a capillary tube. Uh, if we take into account the volume of the liquid contained in the meniscus, then the above formula gets modified as H equals to 2 sigma cos theta by R rho G minus R by 3. However, the factor R by 3 can be neglected for a very uh, narrow tube. So now as I have discussed all the theory parts as per your syllabus, uh, so now I will solve uh, one two problems so that it will be very easy to understand how we will calculate that uh, pressure or surface tension uh, regarding this theory part. Okay, so I will show you now. The first problem, the excess pressure inside a soap bubble of radius 6 mm is balanced by 2 mm column of oil of specific gravity 0.8. Find the surface tension of a soap solution. So here, what is given? The radius R equals to 6 mm, that means 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter. The height, that is 2 mm, that means 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter. Rho, the density that is 0 0.8 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube. So, the excess pressure inside the soap bubble that is equal to pressure exerted by the 2 millimeter uh, oil column. So, these two are equal. So, as part of the formula, you can write 4 sigma by R equals to H rho G. So, from there, surface tension sigma equals to 1 fourth of H into R into rho into G. Now, substituting all the value, you get the surface tension is equal to 2.35 into 10 to the power minus 2 Newton per meter. Next one, uh, a liquid rises to a height of 7 cm in a capillary tube of radius 0.1 mm. The density of the liquid is 0.8 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube. 
if the angle of contact between the liquid and the surface of the tube be zero, calculate the surface tension of the liquid given G is equal to 10 meter per second square. So uh, here also, as you know, uh, the H height that is equal to 7 centimeter means 7 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter. The radius is given 0 0.1 millimeter that means 10 to the power minus 4 meter. And the density is 0 0.8 into 10 cube kg per meter cube. Angle theta is 0 and G is the acceleration due to gravity that is 10 meter per second square. So, uh, as you know the surface tension formula, sigma is equal to H L rho G by 2 cos theta. So, cos 0 that means 1 and if you substitute all the value, you get the surface tension is equal to 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 2 Newton per meter. So, uh, these are the possible books that you can refer. So the evaluation process is same. Uh, you have to appear for a 70 marks in semester exam, uh, 20 marks mid semester exam, and rest 10 from the attendance, interaction, or the assignment. So uh, with these today's video lessons, I have completed the chapter surface tension. Hope all of you have enjoyed and understand. So uh, in next class, I will start fluid mechanics. Thank you.